So the graphite market is a very opaque market. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and uh, unfortunately, what you're reading is usually not accurate when it comes to the graphite space, and you have to do a lot of homework, and that's something that this our company has done. So this is a list of the actual companies that we have visited face-to-face -face meetings over the last seven, eight years to learn about the space, but also to understand exactly what the buyers of graphite require. A little bit about the graphite space, if you're not aware of it, is that the flake graphite is the only form of graphite that's in the top demand. It's the only type of graphite that can go to every single application known with graphite. The flake graphite itself is one of the most popular uh, and it's also in the high value. The number one offtake for flake is still the refractory market. It's the steel. It's in the process of making steel. Uh, it's about 65%. But what's really captivating a lot of the investor network and what's certainly what's happening is its role in electric vehicles. So graphite is the largest raw input into a lithium ion battery. And again, you have another uh, little known uh, application that's in foils. So graphite is used as a fire retardant, also a, a sealant and consumer electronics. And that's one of the fastest growing segments for graphite. Graphite prices have remained strong in the last couple of years, especially for the spherical graphite. It's the form of graphite that goes into lithium ion batteries. And the reason for that is we're seeing some very significant shifts in the automotive industry. Every single uh, OEM now is looking at moving into either full electric or hybrid electric uh, for their lineups in the next five years. We're also seeing major OEM announcements of actually going into battery manufacturing themselves. 2018 was another record year for electric vehicle sales, even though electric vehicles still are very, very small penetration rates, still about 2 to 3% of the global force. But as what you're seeing now is we are approaching that global tipping point. And they estimate by about 2035, you'll see that inflection point where electric vehicles will become price parity with internal combustion engines. Everybody calls that ICE. When it talks about the four horsemen that will be coming with the ice apocalypse, uh, you can see that this is the four pillars of lithium ion batteries. You're looking at graphite, cobalt, lithium, and nickel. And you'll notice that of all these four, the only, uh, I guess, elements that's on the negative side, the anode, is graphite. All the rest of them are the cathode. And nobody talks about graphite. They always talk about the cathode. So it's really a kind of the forgotten element in a very critical element in, in its battery use. Elon Musk famously said, you know, our batteries should be called graphite nickel, not lithium. And the reason for that is when you look at the metal winners when it comes to a lithium ion battery, no matter what the chemistry, graphite wins. It's the most numerous and largest raw material input, and it has projections of anywhere between seven to 10 times the growth over the next decade. Again, this is from Bloomberg, and these tend to be taken with a grain of salt. But again, even if you're half right, uh, these things are large, large demands. This is from Roskel, um, another uh, reputable uh, um, uh, uh, for firm that does the graphite pricing. And you can see from 2008 to 2018, you can see that the flake graphite prices and quantities have grown just for electric vehicle use. And they're projecting for the next 10 years to 2028, huge growth. This is again another eight to 10 times growth. So you have multiple research firms talking about major, major demand, and this is why. Because in a normal 100 kilowatt hour battery, and this happens to be a Model S, specifically 250 pounds of flake graphite per car. A phone is 40 grams. So it's a real exponential lift in the amount of graphite required. In 2015, the mega factories were all talked about. This is what's actually in the pipeline. Most of this is happening in China and in Korea and you're seeing just a massive amount of gigawatts uh, being forecasted in the next five to 10 years strictly for building batteries for electric vehicles. And once again, the graphite anode, which you see in red, that is the winner uh, versus the cobalt, the nickel, and the lithium. It is the most numerous and largest raw material in that battery. However, as an investor, you have to make sure that there's uh, always a bit of a reality check, and that is that refractories remain the largest consumption market for graphite today. And that will be probably the, this the case for the next five to 10 years. Absolutely electric vehicles and its use in electric vehicle batteries is going to be huge, but that's not here yet. And that's probably another five to 10 years away before that happens. And really at the end of the day, nobody knows that inflection point when an electric vehicle is going to be price parity with internal combustion engines. When that happens, there'll be mass penetration, and that's when you'll see the demand curves really hit. So in the meantime, you have to be very, very aware and be cautious of projects that are basically relying solely on either a graphite battery story or a graphene story. That's really 
meaning that these projects are uneconomical selling to the traditional refractory markets today. If you're going to open a mine like we are in the next 12 months, then you have to be economical and you have to be at current prices and realistic volumes. So our project is in Madagascar. It's no stranger to mining. It's got two huge projects. It's got the Mbatabi Nickel project in the north, $8 billion, and then Rio Tinto's billion-dollar project, Ilmenite Sands. And that is the port that we're using. We're using Rio Tinto's port. It's underutilized, and it's a world-class port. Our graphite project is absolutely huge. Uh, we have a very large resource, 140 million tons. We have uh, basically unlimited amounts of graphite. Uh, in graphite pricing, how that works is the larger the flake size, the higher the purity, the higher the price. We have a very high quality graphite concentrate. So almost 50% of our deposit is the premium large and jumbo flake, and we get to very, very high purities with standard flotation. And that's a quite, quite unusual in terms of the global average. We've actually trademarked our graphite to be called Superflake. It's in Japan, Korea, all of the EU, and we also have just received our, um, our trademark for Canada. And this is because we have a unique graphite in the sense that our graphite can go to every single market. Uh, other graphites can do that too, but you have to have extensive testing, which requires huge amounts of volume and lots of time and testing with end users, and we have done that exercise. We have our full mining permits in place, both the mining and environmental. We are in a very ideal mining situation. This is actually our deposit. It's in the uh, very dry area of Madagascar, nowhere near the rainforest, immediately at surface, a negligible uh, strip ratio, and you can see almost no population and a very low environmental footprint. Uh, we also are doing everything to equator principles. We've attracted the interest of the IFC to look at us for our future expansion. And we've done community involvement since we've been there in the last 10 years, so we have full community buy-in, and one of the reasons why we did get our environmental and mining permits. And this is really the unique position of our company. We have a game-changing approach. We're using a modular build approach, and we're doing this in, phased, in phases. So our first phase will be 17,000 tons. The second phase will be a total of 45,000 tons, and we have offtakes to support that. Uh, right now, our to build our mine, the first phase is only $21 million. And you can see versus our peers, we are a fraction of the price. Everybody else is somewhere between 80 to over $300 million to build similar graphite mines. We are a feasibility stage project, so we have operating costs that are competitive with the Chinese. Our, we can build our mine, and then within nine months, we're in production. We've also, like I said, relaunched our bankable feasibility results, so I'm not going to go through these in detail, but you can go to our website and see that we have a very economical project, post-tax, very good paybacks, IRRs, MPVs. Our offtakes are with two significant companies. One is the largest battery company in Japan, who will be supplying a U.S. electric vehicle company, as well as we have one of the largest German steel companies, and that will be announced, we think, in the next four to six weeks. But our 100% of our offtake is spoken for. We don't talk about this very often, but we have another world-class project called Vanadium. Uh, it's about nine miles away from our graphite that's sitting there, very strategic. And we have one of the best teams in the world uh, that has Madagascar mining operations and graphite experience uh, on our board and on our management team. So if you are interested in speaking more, come please come see me and uh, be very happy to take you through our project in detail. Thank you.